Ano-ano nga ba ang mga pinakmabibilis na computers na available na rin sa market? Magkano yan? Afford ba natin? Pag-usapan natin yan in this learning episode with me, Sir Chris Ramos Bergara. Pero bagong lahat, isa munang pagbati mula sa pamantasan ng Webe Isiha para sa Gama Tingilohiya at mula sa Kolehiyo ng Edukasyon. Pinanganak ka between 1950s to 1960s, ang pagbili ng computer for ordinary people just like us is almost close to impossible. Bukod sa napakamahal na ng mga computer during that time, ay napakalaki din ng kanilang hardware. It's just like owning a nuclear reactor. But now, computer now comes with different size and shape. They can be categorized according to their processing power. Yan ang pag-aralan natin in this learning session. For this discussion, we are going to categorize computers based on its speeds or processing power. On the top of our list, we have the supercomputers. An extremely fast computer that can perform hundreds of millions of instructions per second. Ito yung kinoconsidered natin as the fastest computers among other categories or type of computers. Supercomputers have been used for tasks requiring the processing of enormous volumes of data. Saan ba natin ito ginagamit? Okay, ginagamit natin siya sa malalaking data, sa mga uh, process na nangangailangan ng malaking data, katulad ng census, forecasting of weather, designing aircraft, modeling molecules, and breaking encryption codes. More recently, ginagamit na rin siya sa business in terms of gathering data from potential or possible consumers. Ano nung nga ba yung mga examples ng supercomputers? Typically priced between 50 million to 17.5 billion pesos. Okay, take note. As you can see in your screen are the top 2 fastest computers or most powerful computers we have as of today. The Oak Ridge team says the system, the system number 2, costs about 10 billion to build. And number one, we have the Japan's Pokagu supercomputers. It costs about $1 billion or 50 billion pesos in order to create a supercomputer like this. Imagine kung gaano kadaming pera na ubos in building these supercomputers. In 50 million, in 50 billion, siguro, just imagine kung gaano kadaming bahay at kotse na yung kaya nating bilin. But, these supercomputers have a special function. Governments use supercomputers to simulate nuclear blasts, to perform virtual weapons testing, and other computational complex tasks. They are used for modeling climate system. Supercomputers can also use in biotechnology research and in medicine. The, the Bukago and system in the summit machine has been working on fighting against the COVID-19. They collect and analyze the data regarding the genome and system of the virus as well as, this as, well as the discovery of a potential vaccine. Next, we have the main frame computers. A powerful multi-user computer capable of supporting many hundred thousands of users simultaneously. A small mainframes are often referred as mid-size computers. Next, we have the examples of mainframe computers. IBM served as the main uh, producer or manufacturer of mainframe computers. Example, we have the IBM C15 and IBM Z14. Mainframes are used by large organizations such as banks, airlines, insurance company and colleges for processing millions of transactions. 
Next on our list, we have the workstations. A powerful single-user computer, a workstation is like a personal computer, but it has more powerful microprocessor and in general, a higher quality monitor. Introduced in the early 1980s, workstations are expensive, powerful personal computers usually used for complex scientific, mathematical, and engineering calculations and for computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. Workstation had caught the eyes of the public mainly for their graphics capabilities. Even in the Hollywood, in the productions ng mga films, ginagamit yung mga workstations. For example, in the production of Wall E, Harry Potter, and X-Men Origins. Next, we have the microcomputers. A small, single-user computer based on a microprocessor. We have the following classifications of microcomputer. We have desktop PCs. Desktop PCs are older microcomputers whose case or frame how sits on a desk, often with a front keyboard and a monitor on the top. Next, we have the notebooks. Laptops are portable computers that integrated the display, keyboard, and a pointing device or trackball. Processor, memory, and hard drive all in a battery-operated package is slightly larger than an average hand cover book. PC and Laptop or netbook have a similarities. They almost have the same functions and ability. However, notebook have a slight advantage since it is a uh, since it is a portable or pwede magdalin siya kahit saan. However, mas mataas ang presyo ng laptop or ng notebook as compared to PC and as compared to desktop PC. The following are the brands of uh, computers, PC, and laptop that we can see in the market. Popularly, we have the Acer, Asus, Panasonic, Toshiba, Dell, and the list continues. Next, we have smartphones. A completely incorporated into the internet, they are, useful, they are fully compatible with microcomputers and laptop desktops and initially models concentrated on communication with the data, not speech. So previously, ang focus ng mga mobile devices natin is more on call and testing. But now, yung smartphones natin have almost the same capabilities as PCs and laptops. Kaya na natin gumamit ng mga mobile applications and software sa ating smartphones. We can even communicate or mag-connect sa internet using our smartphones and play different games such as Mobile Legends. We can see in our screen the top smartphones that we have in the Philippines. Number one, we have Vivo with 21% unit share. Samsung got the second spot at 19% unit, unit share. Realme at the third spot, Oppo. And the fifth spot, we have Huawei. Next, we have the Personal Digital Assistant. Personal Digital Assistants or PDA, also known as Portable Computers or Pantaps, combine personal management tools such as uh, scheduling calendars, address books, to-do lists, with the ability to send email and faxes in some instances. However, itong PDA, PDAs, close na siya sa pagiging phase out. Due to the emergence ng, ano natin, ng smartphones, yung mga kaya ng gawin ng PDAs ay kaya na rin gawin ng mga uh, smartphones natin. Kaya hindi na siya normally makikita sa market. Next, we have the microcontrollers. Microcontrollers are small specialized microprocessors 
used in smart appliances and cars, also called as embedded computers. For example, they are behind the single function products such as digital cameras, MP3, MP4 players, and organizers, which has been developed into hybrid forms such as gadgets that store photos, videos, as well as music. And lastly, we have servers. A server or network server is a central computer that stores data, collections, and programs to link or produce and, pro and provide services to PCs, workstations, and other devices called clients. In small organization, server can store files and provide printing stations and transmit email. In larger organizations, survey, servers may also house enormous library of financial sales and product information. We are now living in a digital era, era or information technology era. It is impossible to imagine a life without computer nowadays. We are very dependent sa technology that we have as of today. Pagising pa lang natin, ang unang kagad natin inahanap is yung cellphone natin. We try to determine kung meron ba nag-contact sa atin or mga, may mga news or update. Gumagamit tayo ng computers or different kind of computers based on our needs at sa ating at sa availability ng mga machines na ito. 